On this channel, we've made multiple videos covering the quantum computing industry. We believe that quantum computing has been massively overhyped by the financial media. Despite what many quantum companies will tell you, no quantum computer in the world has ever been able to prove any significant practical application. One of the most promotional quantum computing companies is a startup called D-Wave, although calling it a startup might be a misnomer as the company is more than 25 years old. D-Wave stock prices increased almost 20-fold over the past 6 months, giving the company a market capitalization in excess of $6 billion. This is despite the fact that the company generates only minuscule revenue. Over the past few years, D-Wave's revenue has been stagnant at about 2-3 to $3 million per quarter. In the first and second quarters of 2025, they recognized about $14 million from one customer. This customer was a Julich supercomputing center in Germany. This is a government-funded research institution that purchased a D-Wave quantum computer for the purposes of research and experimentation, not for any practical applications. Julik is the only customer that has purchased a quantum computer from D-Wave recently, but many customers have paid fees to access D-Wave's quantum computers over the cloud. D-Wave brags about having over 100 revenue-generating customers, including large multinational corporations. Despite having so many customers, revenue remains minuscule. Excluding Julik, D-Wave generated $2 million of revenue in the most recent quarter. That means they're generating less than $20,000 of quarterly revenue per customer. This seems like a paltry price tag for the supposed revolutionary abilities of quantum computing. Recently, D-Wave CEO Alan Baratz sat down for an interview on Jim Cramer's Mad Money show. This interview is a perfect example of the absurdly promotional nature of the quantum computing industry. So, Jim, we are quite unique in the quantum industry in the sense that we were the first and are the only quantum computing company that is truly commercial. And by truly commercial, what I mean is we have customers using our systems today as part of their business operations. This is not research experimentation. This is customers using us today as part of their business operations. Companies like NTT Docomo, large cellular firm in Japan, uh, companies like MasterCard. Okay, talk so D-Wave claims to have customers using their quantum computers today as part of their business operations. This includes massive corporations including NTT Docomo and MasterCard. Jim Cramer asks Baratz about why their revenue is so paltry. Okay, so that is so important to GE Vernova that I, I would think that they would pay you a lot more money than maybe they're paying you now. Is that possible? Uh, absolutely. So we are, as I said, the only commercial quantum computing company, but we are still in the very early stages of commercialization. Okay. So today, we are working with our customers through our professional services team to help them understand which of their applications can most benefit from quantum, right. to help them build out those applications and then ultimately move them into production. As they start moving into production, that's where we will see a significant revenue uptick. Mr. Barat says that D-Wave is still in the very early stages of commercialization. D-Wave has claimed to be commercial since at least 2020. What we're watching now is a video D-Wave published in 2020, which shows testimonials from customers who are purportedly already using D-Wave's quantum computers for real-world commercial applications at the time. They've been in early-stage commercialization for the past five years. Specifically, he says they're talking to customers to help them understand which of their applications can benefit most from quantum computing, help them build out these applications, and then ultimately move them into production. As they start moving into production, that's when we will see a significant revenue uptick. Mr. Baratz is telling us that the quantum applications are not yet in production. He expects them to enter production at some point in the future. But just a few minutes earlier, he claimed that customers are already using their quantum computers today as part of their business operations. How can this be true if the quantum applications have not yet entered production? Believe it or not, the interview gets even more bizarre. Let's listen to Mr. Baratz talk about crypto. What we were then able to do is take that computation and turn it into what we called a quantum proof of work okay. or blockchain. Okay. The idea being that instead of using uh, the typical computation for Bitcoin, which is SHA-256, what you could do is use this quantum proof of work as the underlying computation for cryptocurrency or other blockchain applications. Why is this significant? Because if, blockchain, if Bitcoin today was using this proof of work rather than what they're currently using, we would consume 1,000 times less power. This is a very energy efficient sure, technology. Sure, but the guys from Core Weave, that's why they got into power. Because it was, they, were, they were Bitcoin guys. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. And it's not only blockchain and Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. It's also AI. The point is... 
Quantum computers are very energy efficient. Our right. systems are going to be able to perform these computations at a fraction of the power required well, today. Time to short the energy stocks. According to Mr. Baratz, D-Wave can make a quantum proof-of-work blockchain that consumes 1,000 times less energy than Bitcoin mining. So what is a quantum proof-of-work blockchain? In May of 2025, D-Wave published a paper titled Blockchain with Proof of Quantum Work. To understand quantum proof-of-work, we first must understand classical proof-of-work, which is what Bitcoin uses. On the Bitcoin blockchain, there is a new block created every 10 minutes. The block contains Bitcoin transactions that need to be validated by Bitcoin miners. Miners solve the block by guessing the correct random number. The first miner to solve the block is rewarded with newly minted Bitcoins. All of the miners in the world compete against each other. They have mining rigs which can go through random numbers very quickly. The more quickly you can guess these random numbers, the more likely it is that you will be the first one to solve the block. This is an oversimplification, but that's basically how it works. D-Wave does not claim they can mine Bitcoin faster than classical computers. Instead, they claim they can make an entirely new blockchain which runs on a different algorithm. In their proposed blockchain, the blocks are set up in such a way that only a quantum computer can solve them. D-Wave could perhaps create a new cryptocurrency, which it can use as quantum computers to mine. Barat says that because quantum computers are so much more energy efficient than classical computers, this new hypothetical cryptocurrency will require 1,000 times less energy than Bitcoin. It is indeed true that Bitcoin is very energy intensive. It is estimated that all Bitcoin miners in the world consume 180 terawatt hours of electricity per year. This is an obscene amount of electricity. For comparison, Argentina has a population of 46 million people. The entire country consumes 159 terawatt hours of electricity per year. The global Bitcoin mining industry could power all of Argentina and still have 21 terawatt hours left over. Bitcoin's electricity consumption has increased massively over the years. Back in 2017, the world's Bitcoin miners collectively consumed 10 terawatt hours. By 2025, this had increased 18 fold. It's important to note that this increased electricity consumption has no impact on the number of blocks or the number of transactions that can be processed. The Bitcoin blockchain can process about 3 to 7 transactions per second. This is determined by the block size and block frequency, which are not impacted in any way by the mining capacity. The reason mining capacity has increased so much is because the price of Bitcoin has risen. The block rewards are paid in Bitcoin. As the Bitcoin price rises, Bitcoin miners are willing to spend more money to compete for the block rewards. In the early days of Bitcoin, each coin was worth only a few cents. Given the low value, very few people were interested in mining it. You certainly couldn't justify the cost of the massive Bitcoin mining operations of today. The electricity consumed in the early days was a tiny fraction of 1% of what is consumed today. Thus, the amount of electricity Bitcoin miners consume is kind of arbitrary. Given the arbitrary nature of Bitcoin's electricity consumption, how can D-Wave make the claim that its quantum blockchain consumes 1,000 times less? They explain that today, electricity costs comprise 90-95% of Bitcoin's total mining expenses. Energy expenses account for just 0.1% of the total computational costs on D-Wave's quantum computers. If you divide 95 by 0.1, you get 950. They round that up to 1,000 to say quantum proof of work requires 1,000 times less electricity. Firstly, whoever wrote this paper knows nothing about the economics of Bitcoin miners. Mining rigs become obsolete within a few years and must be replaced. The depreciation of the mining rigs is at least as expensive as the electricity costs. The assertion that electricity represents 95% of the cost of Bitcoin mining is not true. It's probably closer to 50%. Let's drill down deeper into the argument they're trying to make. Bitcoin mining rigs are relatively simple to operate. You can have a massive warehouse full of thousands of mining rigs. You hook them up to electricity and you probably only need one or two technicians to maintain them. Thus, electricity represents a large percentage of the operating costs. Quantum computers are much more complicated. They require far more technicians, maintenance, etc. Because there are so many other costs, the cost of electricity is only a very small percentage. Let's say that all the Bitcoin miners in the world collectively spent $10 billion per year on operating costs. I don't know what the actual number is, but let's just run with this for now. They consume 180 terawatt hours of electricity. Now let's suppose D-Wave produces its own quantum crypto. All of the quantum miners in the world also spend $10 billion. They would only consume 180 gigawatt hours of electricity, 1,000 times less. They consume so little electricity because they have to spend 99.9% .9 of their money on other operating costs. Alan Barras goes on TV and says the quantum proof of work is 1,000 times more energy efficient than classical proof of work. This is a gross misrepresentation. 
In reality, quantum computers are so expensive to operate that it would not be economically feasible to consume large amounts of electricity. It's important to note that there is no quantum cryptocurrency. D-Wave is just saying that in theory, they believe such a cryptocurrency would be possible. But what would this cryptocurrency even be used for? This is a classic example of inventing a problem for your solution. The only purpose of creating such a cryptocurrency would be to give D-Wave's quantum computers something to do. And if the goal is to create an energy efficient cryptocurrency, this already exists. Ethereum and many other existing cryptos use proof of stake, which consumes only a minuscule amount of electricity. In April of 2025, D-Wave became the target of a short selling report. The activist short seller Carisdale Capital alleges that D-Wave's quantum computers cannot do anything useful. D-Wave has indeed worked with customers including MasterCard. They focus on solving optimization problems, such as how to target customers with personalized loyalty rewards programs. D-Wave acts kind of like a consulting firm. They work collaboratively with their customers to develop new algorithms to solve the customer specific problems. D-Wave does something called hybrid computing. This means that only part of the computation is run on quantum computers. Some of it is run on classical computers. Carisdale alleges that the quantum computer contributes nothing to the process. The entire algorithm can be run on a classical computer. Carisdale claims to have spoken to a former D-Wave engineer. The engineer explains that D-Wave's hybrid solvers give the same types of answers as classical solvers. The hybrid solver doesn't tell you how much of the computation is actually done on a quantum computer. He believes that almost all the computation is done on classical computers. The only benefit for adding the quantum computer is so that they can call it quantum in their marketing. D-Wave has indeed worked with many large customers over the years, but these have been small-scale experimental projects. That's why they're only generating a few tens of thousands of dollars from each customer on average. One of D-Wave's customers was a pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline, or GSK. The idea was they could use quantum computing to help with new drug discovery. Carisdale spoke to a former GSK executive who worked with D-Wave. They first tried running some optimization problems on D-Wave's quantum computer. There was so much noise in the output that it was basically useless. Then they switched to the hybrid solver. D-Wave's hybrid solver supposedly uses both classical and quantum computing. Once they switched to the hybrid solver, all the noise went away and they were indeed able to get useful results. They asked D-Wave, what exactly is a hybrid solver? How do I know it's not just a GPU sitting in a big fancy box with D-Wave written on the side? D-Wave never gave a suitable answer. That's the problem with D-Wave. Their system is literally a black box. They claim that with their quantum computer, they can solve problems that are impossible to solve with classical computers. But they have not proven any economically significant use cases. If such use cases indeed existed, they would be making more than $2 million per quarter. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about quantum computing? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.